Synopsis is a company that helps big names in tech design semiconductors and computer systems. The company will see its first ever leadership transition in 2024 as the current CEO, Art de Geis, steps down. It also just released fourth quarter numbers, beating on EPS and reporting record quarterly revenue. The company also raising its full year revenue guidance on strong design activity. Let's bring in current COO and president of Synopsis, the man who is going to be taking over as CEO as of January 1st. That's the scene Ghazi to discuss more. So, Sassine, thank you so much for being here. First of all, um, congratulations on uh, stepping into that CEO role as of early next year. Um, first of all, just to sort of set the table for our viewers here as to where Synopsis sits in the semiconductor ecosystem, if you will. Your clients are some of the big semiconductor makers. Talk to us about what services you provide to them to help them on their uh, manufacturing journey. Sure, Julie. Uh, first, thank you for having me. So what Synopsys does, we really think of us as the work engine for the semiconductor engineers, meaning customers like the NVIDIA, Apple, Intel, Samsung, et cetera, anybody who design and develop a chip, they use Synopsys software to architect and actually uh, design and verify uh, the chip. And uh, if you talk to any of those customers, uh, we are very well known by every engineer in the semiconductor space, all the way up to their CEOs, because we're very critical to determine their competitiveness and their schedule and product differentiation. What kind of demand or, or boom are you now seeing within the chip space of just people who are looking for chips that are relevant for AI needs? So there are two factors that are happening really around us when it comes to chip demand. One, everything is smart, right? So your smart car, smart home, et cetera. So it's demanding a big need for more sophisticated semiconductor chips. The other mega trend that's super exciting is AI. With AI, in order to make it happen in reality, you need more sophisticated chips in the cloud or in the data center center, as well as more sophisticated chips on the edge. With those two factors, the demand for semiconductor is unprecedented. Um, and I, I was trying to, as I was reading through your earnings and looking through the call here as well, I was trying to understand sort of the quantification of AI and, and its importance to you up to this point. You guys said on the call that on a trailing 12-month basis that AI chips account for about half a billion dollars. Now that's still not very much of your overall revenue to be clear here. Um, so what is sort of the opportunity? How quickly is it moving and, and how is it being used? So yes, you're right. About 10% uh, of the company's revenue today is uh, attributed to AI chip designs. Now, if you look at the macro uh, demand for AI, I believe we all agree that demand is in early stage and is going to continue on expanding as more and more applications uses AI. And more and more applications means you need more and more compute. Therefore, in order to design the chip that goes into that compute, you need more and more Synopsys software in order to enable it. So the half a billion or 10% of the company is, uh, I want to say, in early stages with an expectation to continue on growing very nicely. And I think what people are trying to understand right now is, um, if I may, I believe one of your clients, NVIDIA, really changed the way that people were thinking about AI when it came out last quarter with its forecast. And now it feels like investors are trying to figure out where are the opportunities beyond that, where companies are seeing real revenue right now. So can you put that in perspective for us, not just for you all, but what you're seeing among your clients? The more applications you have for AI, so one of the big uh, applications that we all got excited about and it became understood is uh, ChatGPT, for example. But that's one application. There are many, many other applications in the generative AI space or in the overall acceleration of uh, efficiency and productivity. It can be in any market, industrial, medical, et cetera. And for these markets, uh, we are in that early stage of adoption towards these two vectors, either a productivity push or a uh, ability 
to use AI in order to accelerate uh, product development. Uh, so in that scope, Julie, uh, is where we see the opportunity, and that's why I keep emphasizing, it's still in an early stage of uh, enablement and deployment uh, from an AI application standpoint. When you go about designing chips, especially considering the amount of fabrication capacity that's going to be brought online within the next couple of years, how do you have to think through the natural resources that you're tapping into as well and, and really kind of lean into where there is an abundance of those resources so that you have a chip that is actually making it through the fabrication processes at scale? Excellent question. I don't know if you um, have uh, seen, on Monday we announced a very strategic uh, partnership with Intel. And uh, the, the primary motivation behind that partnership, uh, as you know, Intel and a number of other manufacturing uh, companies got money from the CHIPS Act. So that money is to build out a fab or a manufacturing capacity. But that capacity means nothing unless you're able to put chips into it. Uh, and we are the company that will be enabling uh, Intel and other manufacturer uh, to be bridging between the manufacturing and the chip developer like the AMD, the, uh, the Nvidia, et cetera, to take those chips to those fabs. In that context, AI plays a huge role because when you look at the, uh, the engineers available to develop and design these chips, they're at all time shortage. We don't have enough engineers to develop them. And this is where Synopsys plays a huge role in the automation and modernization of the chip design. So with AI, you can actually uh, implement AI for chip design where you can reduce the tasks from many engineers to fewer engineers in a much shorter time. And that's where the, the disruption and the inflection point is happening due to AI for chip design to support this increased demand due to cloud compute, auto autonomous driving, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Sassine, finally, I want to ask you about the leadership transition, right? You are only the second CEO that this company has ever had, is my understanding. The founder of the company is stepping down as CEO to become executive chairman. Um, what are your thoughts <laughs> on taking the helm there? And, and what's sort of your high level goal for where you want to take the company in the next phase? So uh, Art started the company 37 years ago, and it's so rare to have a founder remaining CEO for 37 years with a lot of energy and vitality. I've been in the company for 25 years, so I'm, I did not join yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have an amazing company, and that's why I've been here for 25 years. Now, as we transition between Art and I, I'm looking forward to continuing the momentum that we have created and the pace uh, to support the growth that we see in our market. If you look at the last uh, few years, we were able to grow the company actually in three years, about 17% CAGR and improve EPS by 26%. We just reported Q3, which is a record quarter. So it's a perfect time to go into that transition and continue that pace and momentum moving forward. Well, Sassine, we really appreciate the opportunity to catch up with you as you prepare for that transition. Sassine Ghazi, Synopsis COO and President, soon to be CEO as of January 1st. Thank you.